There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we're talking travel tips and trends. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. All right, so there's a lot of uh, trends that have been happening in the travel world lately, and Jeff and I have been compiling a list of all of these trends and a whole lot of travel tips that we have um, either experienced or heard about in the last couple of months. So we really wanted to bring them to you and, um, you know, talk about them because there's definitely stuff you guys should be aware of. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're more than midway through the summer right now, right? So yes. so people have either gone on vacation, you're still anticipating your vacation, or maybe you're not going on vacation. Maybe you're going on vacation in, in the fall or winter or something. Like maybe you're saving the days. But so, we, yeah, we compiled this list. We've been seeing some things. We're like, oh, okay, well, let's, let's add that to our list. So here's our summer edition of travel trips, uh, tips and trends. It is a tongue twister. Yes. Um, and I was just actually making fun of you before we recorded that, uh, that you, you were going to mess it up. And I, yes. I totally messed it up. Uh, but we can always pretty much count on me messing it up. Um, <laughs> I think that's always the case. Uh, so one of the trends that we found, and I think this is pretty disturbing also, is that unused vacation days. Um, people are not using their vacation days, um, which I don't understand that. I mean, when I worked for a company, which is yeah. a very small sliver of time, right. um, admittedly. So, I mean, I just like, I think I would plan out my entire year, like yeah. on January totally. 1st. <laughs> so, but I, th- I think people are just afraid to, to leave the office. Sometimes also you, you're on vacation and you have how many emails. I mean, our last vacation, there was a vacation vacation and I had a lot of <laughs> emails to catch up. The, it took me a couple of weeks to kind of really catch up to people. Um, but it says there was a report out that says 73% um that pe- people do not use their vacation days. Um, so less that's than, a big number. That is a really big number. And less than half actually take the full amount of days. Uh, the result is that around 220 million vacation days go unused. Yeah, I mean, that just, it really blows my mind, especially, I think, in the U.S., because we don't often, if you work for a company, you don't usually get that much vacation time. So I'm shocked that that many people 
don't use it. Right. And I, I think if you if you work for a company, because the last company that I actually worked before, I went freelance, uh, I could not actually, I had vacation days, but I could not cash out my vacation days. I've, I worked for other companies. You could actually ba- cash out your vacation days. But there is a new company. Uh, it's a new website called PTO Exchange. And they actually help you calculate of actually how much in dollars your vacation uh, days are and you could actually use th- that time that that money and you could actually uh, use it to book flights or or a hotel or something like that yeah I think that's really cool because I think you know especially when we you know get a new job and we're offer all these benefits like we tend to overlook the value of the days off and I always tell people like if you're negotiating and you can't negotiate salary one thing you should always try and negotiate get more is time off, yeah, right? get more time off because it actually does have a value. Yeah. You may not see it, you know, in your paycheck every week or every other week or however often you're paid, but it actually is a value. So I think that's super cool that you could potentially trade your days in for mm-hmm cash yeah so this pto exchange so so through the website you could actually book accommodations or flights um and uh or you could also donate that portion to charity or you could actually put it into your 401k or you could actually start a 401k through this exchange as well too yeah that's it's just super cool we're gonna definitely have the link in the show notes for this because i think there's gonna be a lot more companies that come along that are doing things like this because a, I mean, it's a way for companies to cash in on you not taking your time off. So, I mean, that's right. obvious. There's a business model there. But B, because I think we're really in a technology-driven society where this kind of stuff is is cool to be able to have all of these options. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, I think two weeks is not enough time for vacation anyway. You need to have more. The rest of the world has a lot more vacation time than us. That's a whole other topic, but that's just my opinion that we don't have enough vacation time as it is. So, you know, definitely try to use yours or at least get it monetarily somehow there to the to value. Ease yeah. The value don't just of it. let exactly. them go away. Exactly. So, uh, so next up on our list, let's talk about some airlines, what they're doing these days. So JetBlue, our friends at JetBlue that we've done a giveaway with, um, they actually – talk about sci-fi right here. They're actually start, and there's a couple ones that are similar to this as well too. But um, a couple months ago, they started rolling out this test program in Boston only as of right now, uh, and it's a facial uh, recognition um, boarding pass thing. So you actually go up to this facial recognition um, device – and it will scan your face there live um, before you board. So you actually don't need a boarding pass. You don't need a ticket. Um, it will actually take from your picture from your from your passport. So you actually have to have, pa- have a passport. We all have a have passport, right? I that, hope that so. That listen to Millennium Money? Of course we do. So, uh, so anyway, so it actually scans your face. And then they actually get a confirmation from Customs and Border Protection and then they go boom, but it, it also goes real fast too. Yeah, they, and and this is this is I mean, if you don't know that facial recognition is the next yeah. big wave, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. you're sadly mistaken because everything is going to go this way, whether you know it or not. I have, I have actually worked with a company that has a patent on a facial recognition device, and they're putting them everywhere. I'm talking drugstores, supermarkets. This is this is the movie Minority Report. It is, it and really it, is. It, but you know, I hate to say it, it is one of the only ways I think right now we can actually stay on top of theft places because it's just it takes too long for like a normal store to tell whether somebody's you know a, a thief or not yeah. and facial recognition is just it, it is it's just the way it, but i like to see that this is actually being used for a good way yeah i mean i think i think this is definitely something for security reasons too that sure. that you know uh for people that are on the you know terror list or whatever the case is a no fly list and that you know that, that they would actually have their facial recognition and you know so it's a lot easier and sometimes there's also those the people names get mixed up too yes. on on those kind of lists they're like no this is me i have a passport you know this is you know right so. and you can't like you can't escape facial recognition right. i mean there's no way to right. really cheat it <clears throat> right you know it's it's your face it's your eyes it's yeah. you know your thumbprint all of those things that yeah. are unique so. yeah exactly so this is a test program that they're just doing it jet is just doing 
doing this uh, in uh, in Boston, but they plan to if, it, if it's successful to roll it out. And like you said, it's it's really coming. Um, the only real negative to th- that they've been getting some feedback is that the data people are worried about the data that is stored um so once you're you you know because your information goes from you know the uh, border protection so people are kind of worried about that but yeah but you know know, i I, don't think we can escape yeah i mean i think it's a a safe it's a safety thing we're going to talk more about a little bit more uh later about some safety issues too as well that are coming up too but i you know i think this is one of them our data is everywhere though yeah i mean i don't particularly like facial recognition as far as consumerism but i think this is a, a good thing so um but that's just me i'm a fan <laughs> of it so we're, as usual uh, we're I, a little I'm, bit different. I'm, a, I'm a big brother is watching us too much sometimes i'm but. a it's okay <laughs> uh so delta um the good people at delta they are testing face scanners as well but this will actually let you check your own baggage in so Ooh. which my opinion about this too is I don't understand why they have attendance when you go to the airport because half the time you're doing everything yourself and how also yeah. how safe is that too? But maybe with facial recognition, you know, that you walk up and get her here, this is me and here's my bag and you could just check it in yourself and that that could save a lot of time too. Yeah, because haven't you noticed that, you know, we, we travel a lot for work and I've noticed sometimes when they're checking your boarding pass with your bag with your id it's a very short glance at your id like yeah. not you know yeah. blaming anybody right. here but i'm just saying sometimes i notice like ooh, maybe you right. might want to take a, a few right. more seconds to actually look at me look at my driver's license right you know, right so not that i'm a criminal right. but right. you know but this also proves too that that facial recognition is kind of here so you know so right now uh delta is only doing this in minneapolis but again, just like JetBlue, they want to roll this out uh, nationwide if this actually works. So, you know, that's a definitely – it could be a lot faster way to actually check in your bag, I think. You know, so um, – and United, of course, <laughs> they've been in the, in the news for the bad reasons, for dragging people off the planes lately. But they are finally <laughs> – this is a program uh, supposedly they've been working on for a while – to actually help with the overbooking. And that's what the whole problem with the doctor being dragged off the flight, that they were overbooked, and they're always overbooked. And to Every me, airline. Yeah, every airline is overbooked. To me, I don't understand how, how that works, because if you go you know, buy a car from somebody and say, oh, I'm sorry, we sold out our cars, you don't have a car, and it, it, it doesn't make sense to me and how these billion-dollar businesses are actually making money off us overbooking. So anyway, what they, ha- they have this new system, this new computer system, will actually email you up to five days, I believe it's at five days in advance, um, if the flight's overbooked. And they will give you the opportunity to rearrange your flight and they will compensate you for that too. And so, which essentially it takes away all the hassle of you going to the airport, going through all that stuff and then saying, Hey, my flights, your flights overbooked. Sorry. You have to or if you bump you, whatever the case is. Yeah. Because if you, I mean, if you had, a, I mean, for us in LA, like we've got to leave the airport ungodly early because it takes so long to get to the airport. But if we had like a day notice that we could, you know, for a right. fee rebook, I think a lot of times we might actually consider it. But once you're there and you've gone through like yeah. the whole entire hassle to get there, it's not always something you want to, you know, agree to. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, to me, <laughs> I don't understand how this wasn't in place in the first place. Like how, how have they not had this system anyway? So, so they'll, they'll actually email you, you can, you can get compensation for it and you could also rearrange your time. You go, okay, cool. That's fine. I can do that. Cause a lot of times people do that anyway. I mean, people, sure. people want to get, you know, some vouchers and especially if it's, you know, it's the, you know, maybe, so maybe it's like the next day or maybe that's, it's, you know, uh, an earlier flight or a later flight that, that, that they want you to take. It could be the still, the, cause they say that it still could be the same day. They just want you to change that particular flight. It might be a different day. Um, I think one of the downsides, of course, if you're a business traveler, this really doesn't work for you because you probably have to get to, you know, that place, um, on time, obviously, but, you know, but that's still, you know, uh, obviously for, for business travelers that, that wouldn't work, but I think for everyone else, this is a really good thing. But as of right now, they're only doing this, um, in a, um, with the mileage plus customers, but again, they really want to roll this out. If this works, if they don't have any bugs in the system, they want to roll this out, uh, you know, nation or nationwide. And I think every airline should be doing this. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and another thing, just while we're talking about those, like usually the first amount of money they offer you to change your flight, if usually you hold out just a little bit, if they are not getting any takers, you can usually get probably at least 25% more, usually 50 to 100% more. So um, I always say don't, don't uh, you know. Don't give all the goods away. Yeah, you know don't saying? jump up at the first offer. You know, there's right. there's way more it's, room for it's negotiation. It's kind of like dating is what you're saying? It's like, like don't yes. just, yeah, don't just marry the first one or don't just, just whatever with yes. the first one. Yeah, just, I think so. Right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, you play hard to get is what you're saying. Yes. Right, okay, cool. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah. You're not alone, but worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T-O-S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations 
all wrong. <laughs> I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. So uh, last on our airlines, would you fly millennials that are out there listening to this? Would you fly on a millennial plane? I don't know what that means, but it sounds like it might be a fun thing. So, Well, we don't have maybe. totally all the details yet, but Air France is rolling out um, later this year, early next year. They haven't given a total date on this. A new millennial airline. So it's an off- actually an offshoot from Air France, and it's called Yoon. It's J-O-O-N, so I'm assuming it's Yoon, don't you think? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it sounds, it's in French, so I'm assuming that's good. Yoon. Um, but it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to start in Paris, uh, flights from Paris, but then eventually by 2018, and sometime in 2018, it will go uh, worldwide. Um, but what this is, then their quote here in, in this article that we found, uh, it's aimed at young working clientele, the millennials, 18 to 35-year-olds, um, and the lifestyles in the digital technology age that we live in. So everything will be like push screen and... Yeah, they said there's, they said there's more... De- yeah, exactly. That's what I'm kind of <laughs> thinking. They said there's more details coming out in September. But really what this is, it, it, the whole thing is geared towards, um, you know, millennials and a younger version. So there's going to be, you know, te- more technology on the plane. Um, even the flight attendants are dressed casually. Hmm. Um, so there's a lot more uh, casual atmosphere is what they say and a lot more casual vibe like I said the more details are coming out in September but I think this is really interesting um, that that it actually an airline going hey you know what let's create a whole other airline for younger you know travelers which just proves my point that millennials are worth doing things a little <laughs> bit different for yeah exactly exactly so you know I, I, I sort of think that's a really, you know, interesting thing. This is not, a, and this is, but this is not a discount airline. It is no, so, so it'll because be, I, I don't think millennial yeah. inherently has to mean budget. I right. think that's. I just I thought it was interesting that that the that the article actually pointed that out that it's it's actually not a discount airline because that's what people think. People right, think people millennials think are, are cheap. Are staying in hostels and and have and have and, no and, money at one well, backpacking and something like that too so right yeah so i mean this is going to be a full-on legit airline i think it'll be um, like a hopefully it'll be yeah, like, like an experience like more of an that, experience well that's than... what they say that that's actually what they say it, it, it they want this thing to be an experience which is what i think millennials and i think even other people you know even yes. older age want they want a cool experience and i think that's what especially you know, when you're in a tube floating yeah. forty thousand miles up in the air right right exactly so um, so yeah, so that's that's what's happening in airline in airline news um, right now. That's what's trending. Uh, so let's move on to as we mentioned before the TSA. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on there, um, and one of the things that is going on right now it's a test program in Denver, and uh, the TSA is doing uh, pre-check passengers. They actually have just like facial recognition, they actually have fingerprint recognition. So mm-hmm. if you are, this is only for um, uh, um, people that actually have pre-check right now. So if you have TSA pre-check, this is only for them. But again, this is something they do want to roll out, you know, uh, in the future. Um, so what you do is a scanner, you have it and you just go past it and you just go wa- uh, wave your hand in front of this thing. So you don't even put your hand down like we do like at LAX and some right. other airports have that. Um, but you actually <laughs> wave your hand and it will get, as long as it, you know, dings and gets your fingerprints and boom, you're on your way right through security like that. Well, I think that is just like amazing. Right. I mean, because any of us will really, and if you've traveled anywhere, but especially if you live in one of the big cities like LA, New York, yeah. Chicago, uh, gosh, what I, yeah, New York a lot, and, yeah, lot of yeah, other exactly. yeah. cities, yeah. like you spend Boston. a lot of time, you know, through TSA. Yeah. So I think, right. Any of these things that we can do ahead of time that makes it faster is yeah. going to be such a blessing because it's only going to get, I think, unfortunately, worse and worse. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and we travel to a lot of really big airports and, and I've said this before, I am not, we are not fans of our uh, 
airport that we have to fly out of LAX. So LAX, uh, and, uh, you know, management, if you're listening to this, you guys really need to step it up a lot more. In fact, I will share a story. I thought it was really interesting. We traveled uh, just before 4th of July weekend. Yes. And, you know, typically at LA, we're like already doom and gloom thinking about the long lines. We got up to security on what would be a traveling for the 4th of July yeah, holiday, essentially. Right. One of the, busy, and the busiest ones we did not, of, of, We weren't of going summer. TSA pre-check. Yeah. We, had to, we did not have to take off our shoes. We did not have to take anything out of our bags. We did not, you did not have to take anything out of your not, pocket, not, did you? Uh, no. Well, I know I did, but I didn't. You did, I, I right. didn't, and then. And we and, thought it w- there were no bins. Yeah. We thought it was the weirdest I didn't have to thing take out a hat ever. Or yeah, it was just, yeah. And, and everybody was that way too. They're like, wait, I don't, I don't have to what? Yeah, yeah, it felt like the old times, but it did not feel particularly And it was sort safe. of an offshoot, sort of, we're like, what is happening here? So, so yeah, and in, in my story, what I was going to say is, is that when you come back through customs from another country in through through LAX, like we go to so many countries and it's not even close to, to they're, I think they're thorough, but like here, it's like, you do the thin print. And if you do the, if you do, I'm like, what do you do this at other airports? I don't think I, cause I've gone through customs at other airports, even Chicago and, and other places. And I'm like, I don't have to do this here. So yeah, I don't, I, I don't think- really understand it. So anyway, what I'm saying is, is I think fingerprints, I think facial recognitions, if these things can work and I have just to wave my hand, boom, we're good. But, you know. Well, I think that will bring hopefully some consistency because yeah. I think the amount we travel, like when we traveled home from Stockholm <laughs> last year yeah. and we were going on an international flight and they didn't even check our <laughs> right. ticket with our ID. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, no. Check yeah. our ticket. Please, please, please. So I think the more you travel, like the more inaccuracies you see. So hopefully those things just bring like a common element that everybody has to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't because there's so many. It, it was funny that that happened to us at LAX because because we've been compiling this list. Um, actually, most of them before we actually left on our vacation, and you know, I was like, wait, is this a new test program or something? It's like, are we? I'm like, but but because they cut, like they split off the line, I'm like, is there a mistake? Did something happen? Did, I think did, it was a right, mistake, right, right, but right. whatever. It was, it was weird though because it was a lot of us. So. We got there safe, so right, right, exactly. So so uh, yeah, so the finger recognition right now that is a test program in Denver. So if you're on the TSA pre-check, you know, maybe you're actually going to go through that. So that would be a, kind of a cool thing. And I'm kind of hoping that rolls out, you know, sometime soon. Uh, on to electronics. Um, so uh, right now in 10 airports, this is a TSA th- a thing as well too. They have a test program um, in 10 different major airports, um, like such like Boston, Detroit, and our beloved uh, LAX, um, a bunch of other places around the country they're doing this uh, trial run for passengers to take out all of their electronics that is bigger than your cell phone so including your laptop that have you as you've always done but now it's your ipad your ipads kindle, e- kindle uh, all of those things like that whatever whatever you know i mean we have audio equipment and stuff like that you know i mean hopefully some of this is not on that list but you know you know it's like so you wh- basically you, i mean we've joked about this for years yeah. that we're going to go to airport in robes yeah just in a buck, row buck naked because and... you pretty much just need to strip down when you go through the scanners. Yeah. But this is this is now you strip down and you remove every piece of content from your back yeah. in the same process. Yeah, I mean, because I'm all for because people at first did not like the body scanners. And I'm like, I don't care. Whatever. The, the, you know, if you want to put a probe on me and that's fine, you know, whatever <laughs> that's coming next anyway. But I mean, no, but uh, you know, I don't mind, but what I just don't understand because other countries, big major other countries don't do the, the take off the shoe thing. And, but they, yet they do scanners too. It's like, I, you can't scan my feet when, but without, you know, if, I mean, I, I guess it's fine. I guess it's, you know, we've, we've obviously had threats of shoe bombers in the past, uh, but it just sort of seems like they're they're If you can do facial recognition, why can't you, you know, uh, Scanner, facially yeah. recognize my adidas i mean come on uh but anyway so 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 this is uh this is coming come this is all this is right now in 10 airports but this is coming this is coming to all airports sometime soon what right now they're doing is trying to get faster and they say it actually is 
moving really fast in these te- in these test program markets and they're all major markets so you know so it is definitely coming so next time you you're traveling or if you're traveling one of the bigger cities this year um out of the one of the bigger cities you, you will probably have to go through this and take out all your stuff and the the reason why this is happening too is because because of you know back fees we're all cramming so much more in our in our yes. carry-ons so so it is harder for them to um, scan all to scan that. so so it is a safety thing and I understand I, I totally understand that I totally respect that um, there's also more threats too um, that, that that they're getting uh, one of the reports they they, they showed um, they we, they talked about our our now now former as we do this podcast former TSA uh, head uh, actually mentioned that they did a test because of data that they had that they actually blew up a plane with an electronic device based off of intel that they had so you know so it is 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 totally a safety thing but one of the other things that they're doing actually in phoenix uh the tsa this is a, another test program they actually have a 3d scanning um high-tech scanning machine that will that your your bag goes through faster and can actually go in deeper and see all the different things too huh. so so it also might be a thing that we don't have to do the electronic thing i'll take all right. the electronic if they could actually get this to work so, so they, so at least TSA is actually trying more and more to experiment to, to, to get it faster and so you know, um, which is good, which is it's really good. I so. just wish maybe they would experiment. I understand why they do the bigger metro airports, but I wish they would almost experiment in smaller airports first <laughs> to like get it down because you put any glitch in these bigger airports and we're just. You know, we're all cursing the TSA out, and you yeah, know. yeah. Which is, I mean, they're doing their job, and so, sure. so yeah. yeah. And because even though even though I have a big complaint about many facets of LAX, uh, you know, knock on wood here, I usually don't want uh, spend a lot of time in, in the and we don't have as you right have now, now we, cursed us exactly, exactly. But no, but most of the time the lines actually flow. They, yes, they flow they really do. well. They do. I think they're a little cramped there. Like other airports, they're, they're way bigger, and and I'm like, because I feel like every time in LAX, I'm like. Oh my gosh, it's like we're right on top of people and I can't get to the bin and whatever, you know. But but yeah, but you go to other airports, like we flew out of a small airport in Colorado and we literally just bought sandwiches from a grocery store. Wrapped up. Wrapped up from a grocery store. It had the data on it and stuff like that and we had to unwrap it to, or had to go through the scanner again. That's what it was. Right, they had to take the sandwiches out and look at the sandwiches. Um, And we thought it was like our bags or something and we thought, oh, there's something there or whatever. But it's like, no, our sandwiches we just bought. Well, and you get (laughs) in... in, I don't know about you. I'm probably more of a worry wart. But in situations like that, I get worried. Like, did somebody do something to my bag? Did somebody put right. something in my well, bag? And, and, I, you know? and also, we were in Colorado, right. well, so where it's legal to buy, you know, to buy marijuana. I'm like, did somebody? Because the dog was there too. It's like, yes. You know, it's like, what do you? No, we're good. We're just a sandwich here. You know, right. maybe, maybe they didn't say. Maybe that's what they're looking for too. Because you can't take it out of the state too. So. I don't yeah, know. I don't know, but so. but still, nonetheless, unsettling. Right. So anyway, so those are the travel tips and trends that we have. Uh, we'll have a more uh, another list of these probably sometime in the fall as well, because we just want to keep you guys updated. Because you want to you want to know about these things. You want to be you want to be those prepared travelers and not those people who get to the airport and go, "What? Where do we go? How do we check in?" You know, you see that so much, but uh, you don't want to be one of those people. Exactly. So we'll have links to all of this good stuff in the show notes. And hey, if you like this episode, head on over to the link in the show notes and leave us a review on iTunes. We would really appreciate it.